What is your name, please? My name is Frank O'Leary. What is your name, please? My name is Frank O'Leary. What is your name, please? My name is Frank O'Leary. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Frank O'Leary and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you, and good evening, and welcome once again to our little game of deliberate misrepresentation, wherein our panel endeavors to figure out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. To Tell the Truth is brought to you each week at this time by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Phil Silvers. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. Phil, may I say it's nice to see you out of uniform, and on Tuesday night, too. How come? Well, uh, starting this week, bud, we go to Friday nights, and so I can really come over and enjoy the show, having been an avid watcher. Also, I have this horrible cold, and the panel of What's My Line sent me over to infect your panel. <laughs> <laughs> we got Geritol, right? That'll do it. <laughs> All right. Now, panel, as you heard, these three gentlemen all claim to be Frank O'Leary. Only one, of course, is the real Frank O'Leary. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. Now, in front of you, panel, you'll find a copy of an affidavit. Will you please follow along with your copies as I read from mine? I, Frank O'Leary, am a former jewel thief. I have spent, I have spent 22 years of my life in prison part of it at Sing Sing, where I worked as butler for the famous Warden Laws. While in prison, I wrote a book called Dictionary of American Underworld Lingo. I am now on parole and earn my living writing magazine articles. I am also a book reviewer for the New York Times and the Saturday Review of Literature. Signed, Frank O'Leary. All right, panel, as you heard, these three gentlemen all claim to be Frank O'Leary, former jewel thief. Only the real Frank O'Leary is required to answer your questions truthfully. You will each question until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you'll be asked to register your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Frank O'Leary. And we'll start tonight with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, Bert. Uh, number one, if you had a choice, uh, what prison would you rather stay in? <laughs> Sing Sing. Sing Sing? Uh, number two, um, uh, number one, why? Because it's a nice place to live. <laughs> uh, number two, what is soup? Pardon? What is soup? Stoop? Soup. Soup. S-O-U-P. Soup. So watch. Uh, number three, what is soup? Uh, nitroglycerin, I believe. Number one, what is soup? Nitroglycerin. Uh, number two... Uh, what year did Warden Lawhorn replace, or rather, uh, Warden Laws replace Warden Lawhorn? Number three, was that? No, number, no, number two. two, but what number three. What year did Warden Laws... I beg your pardon? What did you say? What year did Warden... What year did Warden Laws replace Warden Lawhorn? He left Sing Sing. No, she wants, uh, Ms. Bergen wants to know when uh, he arrived there, when Warden Laws arrived. When Warden Laws replaced Warden Lawhorn. Warden Lawhorn. Well, I wasn't there when he arrived. I'd say he arrived there about 1912. Thank you. Phil Silvers. Uh, number one, uh, in the jargon of the underworld, how would you say stealing the jewel? Lifting the ice. Number two. Same question. Lifting the ice, number snatching three. the ice. Heisting the rocks. What? Heisting the rocks. Heisting the rocks. Nothing personal, fellas, you understand. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, again using the underworld jargon, if you went on a job and I asked you, were you carrying any iron, what would I mean? Cat. Number three, uh, did you drive a car? Yes. Did you drive a car here tonight? No. Did you drive a car here, number one? 
No, sir. Number two, did you drive a yes. car? Yes. And your name is O'Leary? Correct. Did you have an aunt in Chicago who used to own a cow? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was my grandmother. <laughs> All right, Kitty, come on. Number one, who is the publisher of the New York Times? Salzberger. Number three, who is the editor of the Saturday Review? Cousins, I believe. Number one, uh, what is cellophane used for in jimmying, I think is the phrase, a door? To make it easy to slide a knife or a flat surface to uh, slide the lock back. Number three, as a butler, do you serve from the right or the left? The left. Always from the left. Um, Hi, Gardner. Number one, uh, you write for the Times. Did you write for the prison paper up at Sing Sing? No. Uh, number two, did you? Occasionally. What was the name of the paper? Number two. The Bypass. Uh, number three, what was your pen name? Take your button. What name did you write under at, at uh, Sing Sing? <laughs> <laughs> I write under my own name. Your own name. Uh, number three, what was Warden Law's full name? Louis E. Laws. And number two, what was his full name? Louis E. Laws. Number one, what was his full name? Louis E. Laws. Uh, number uh, one. That's it. I'm sorry. It's time to vote, panel. So without consultation or further questionings, will you mark your ballot? And select number one. Number two. <clears throat> or number three. Remember, please, that the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. Polly, we all set? There it goes. Yep. The die is cast. For whom did you vote, Polly? I voted for number three. It's uh, either number three or number one. Uh, I asked number three the question first, and number one said the same answer, and I don't know whether number three was answering because he knew what number one would say or what. Mm -hmm. But they knew what, uh, what was it? Soup. They, they knew what that was. Number two didn't, so. Mm -hmm. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Phil, how about your selection? What's troubling me, bud, is I understood what Polly said. <laughs> 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 I didn't know I had that much of a fever. You're in a bad I, way. Uh, <laughs> I voted for number three because uh, eliminating number one, having been addicted to glasses, he looks uncomfortable in his. Number two didn't know what soup was. And, uh... Number three, he looks like a fellow sold me in Essex once, and I'm with him. <laughs> Kitty, how about your choice? I voted for number three. Well, I like heisting the rocks better than lifting the ice. <laughs> uh -huh. And hi, Gardner. I voted for number one. Uh, I believe the warden's name was Louis A. Laws, as number one said. Secondly, I don't believe you're permitted to drive a car uh, while on parole. That's the reason. All right, that's why I asked that question. You now have our votes and the reasons our panel made up their minds as they did. I hope you made up yours quite as well if you're playing along with us, which we'd like you to do. We'll find out now which one of these three gentlemen is a one-time jewel thief. So will the real Frank O'Leary please stand up. Thank you very much, sir. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is Buck Green. I'm a fingerprint expert and former chief of criminal identification in the Treasury Department. <laughs> and number two, what about you, sir? My name is Daniel Dugan. I've been 49 years associated with Tiffany and Company, at which time... <laughs> <laughs> During most of that time, I've been a diamond salesman. <laughs> Doing it the hard way, in other words. Well, as you can see, our panel did real well. Three of them picked the right one. That means there are only one incorrect vote for a total of $250 from Geritol. Enjoyed having you all with us tonight, gentlemen. Hope you did, too. Good night and good luck. <laughs> and now may we have our next team of challenges, please. What is your name, please? My name is Tiger Petrini. What is your name, please? My name is Tiger Petrini. What is your name, please? My name is Tiger Petrini. 
All right, panel, may I direct your attention to your copies of this affidavit as I read it? I, Tiger Petrini, am a speedboat racing champion. I entered my first race when I was 10 years old, and last year won 22 out of 26 starts. I have won a national championship, set one world's record, and have broken that record twice since I set it. Last month, I was elected to the Gulf Marine Hall of Fame, the youngest person ever to have won this distinction. Signed, Tiger Petrini. <laughs> now, panel, as you heard, these three young people all claim to be Tiger Petrini, speedboat racing champion. Remember, only the real Tiger Petrini must answer your questions truthfully, and let's begin this round with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Number two, are you a girl? Yes. <laughs> if he's not, he's a boy with awfully long hair. <laughs> Number three, do you know where Malcolm Campbell set his world's record? No, I do not. Number one, do you know? Yes. Would you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Lake Mead. Lake Mead. Uh, number two, what sort of a motor do you use? I use a Mercury. Number three, how fast was your last record? 28. Point four sixty one. What does that mean? Twenty eight miles point five four sixty one yes. per hour. Yes. Number one, is it a is it an outboard motor you use? Yes. An outboard motor. Number two, where do you go to school? Uh, I don't go to sc I usually go to school at Lincoln School in where I live, Danbury, Connecticut. But oh. but you don't go to school. Yes. I hope my son's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Number two, where did you say you you uh, live? Stanbury, Connecticut. Oh, in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, number uh, two, when you're not a tiger, what is your name? My name? No, number one. Edgar. Beg pardon? Edgar. Edgar, number two, what is your name? My name is Mary. And your name, number three? Edgar. Your name is Edgar, too. Well, that's a, I'm glad that you didn't say your name was Edgar, too, number two. <laughs> uh, at number one, do you know Garwood or know of him? I've heard of his name. Uh, who is he, do you know? All I know is he used to race boats. Uh-huh. Polly? Uh, number one, um, what is the record that it says you set? 28.461 miles per hour. Oh, uh, do, you, uh, do you race an adult competition? No. Oh. Number two, uh, why are you called Tiger? After my boat, Tiger Rag. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, Number three, um, who else is in this Marine Hall of Fame? Well, there are 157 members, and uh, Garwood is in, uh -huh. uh, Bobby Baxter, yeah. and, uh, well, there's quite a few others. I, <coughs> Bill? Uh, it's a little late for you to be up, so let's get to it. Who's Tiger? The real Tiger, raise your hand. <laughs> 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 Number one, uh, what is the name of your boat? Hound dog. I can't hear you. Hound dog. Hound dog. Hound dog. <laughs> Does it wiggle in the water a lot? Yes. Uh, Number two, there is a famous racer, Dino Paparelli, in the water, a great speedboat racer. Do you know if uh, Mr. Paparelli is Swiss or Italian? Italian. That's all the time we have, I'm sorry to say. Once again, voting time has come around, so without consultation, will you please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. Oh. <laughs> Having a tough time, Polly? For whom did you vote? I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't, don't know. know. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I voted for number one, and uh, I... I... <laughs> Do I have to say why? No, not if you don't oh, want to. Well, then let's just forget the okay. whole thing. <laughs> Bill, what about your choice? Well, I eliminated, unfortunately, number two, because when she answered Dino Paparelli, that's a character on my show. And uh, <laughs> number three was just a little too glib. I admire him for preparing so well, which shows goodwill that he's going to become something someday, not that they all aren't. And so I voted for number one. It's rubbing off me. I should say it is. <laughs> all right, Kitty, what about your vote? I voted for number one, too. Um, only because he knew about Lake Mead, and I didn't ask the others. I'm sure they knew as well. Hi, Gardner. I also voted for number one. 
I decided to stay with number one all night tonight. <laughs> now, actually, I think number one was uh, biting his lip every time he said something. He's nervous here, but I don't believe he's nervous in the speedboat. All right, let's find out right now, because we've made up our minds, and I hope you have. Let's see which one now of these nice young people is the real speedboat racing champion. So will the real Tiger Petrini please stand up? Thank you very much, Don. Thanks very much. You can sit down again now, if you will. And number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is Lita Elliskew, and I'm a student at Columbia Grammar School in New York, and I've never been in a motorboat in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, number three, how about you, sir? My name is Kent Phelps, and I attend seventh grade at Rhodes School in New York. Well, you're a mighty nice group of young people, I'll tell you. And uh, even though the panel scored 100% for them, there's $150 coming to you to be divided from Geritol. Thank you very much. Hope you had fun. Good night and good luck. <laughs> Incidentally, Tiger Petrini has asked us to see that his share of the winnings tonight will go to the principal of his school in Eastport, Maryland, to be used for the support of that school's sports program. So we're going to do that for him. Now, we'll meet a new set of challengers in just a moment. Now, may we have our third team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Lowell Thomas, Jr. What is your name, please? My name is Lowell Thomas, Jr. What is your name, please? My name is Lowell Thomas, Jr. Everybody listening to the voices. All right, panel, will you please follow along now with your copies of this affidavit? I, Lowell Thomas, Jr., crossed the Atlantic when I was 12 weeks old, and I've been traveling ever since. I have taken photographs, written magazine articles, and have lectured about expeditions I have taken in various parts of the world. One of my most memorable trips was the time I accompanied my father on a caravan across the Himalayas to remote Tibet. So far, I have traveled on six continents and have covered more than a half million miles. Signed, Lowell Thomas, Jr. <laughs> famous world traveler. You'll again see a uh, question until you hear the signal and we'll start this round with High Gardner, hi? Huh? Uh, number one, is it true you have an agreement with your dad not to grow a mustache? Of <laughs> course. Uh, number two, uh, who is your very distinguished neighbor in Pauling? Governor Dewey, former governor. Uh, number three, uh, I would like to ask you a question. You almost missed death on one of your adventures. Exactly when and where was that? Well, it was during our flight to adventure with my wife and I. It was toward the end of our trip, and it took place in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, what were the names of the boy and the girl uh, whom you took on a holiday in Cinerama? Do you remember? I don't know. Would you remember number one? Number three? I don't... I don't either, so we're even. <laughs> <laughs> Polly? Number one, um, um, are, are they called uh, the Himalayas or the Himalayas? Either one. I Either call one it the Himalayas. Correct? Either one is correct. Uh, number two, is there a preference for... Either way. Number three? Well, either way is correct. Uh, the Himalayas are preferred. I see. Uh, number one, it, it says here that uh, you, uh, one of your most memorable trips uh, was the caravan. Why? Why? Well, there had only been six Americans ever to go into Tibet before. I see. And uh, um, Dad and I went there. Uh, we had a marvelous time. We met the Dalai Lama. Uh, we came out, and, uh... Dad... You just ruined my next question. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, how about you? Hi, hello, how's Dad? <laughs> uh, number two, there's a three-letter word often used in uh, crossword puzzles, meaning animal of Tibet. What is that word? That's the yak. Well, I could use that on my show. <laughs> uh, number three, recently a great showman passed away. And he was uh, very much connected with Cinerama. Do you know who I refer to? Do you know number one? I have no time to dick him. If you don't answer me immediately, you're through. <laughs> number Fred one? Waller. Who? Fred Waller. Number two? Do you know who I'm there, perhaps? 
Uh, uh, Who? I didn't hear what? that. So right, I heard him. Yes, it's Louis B. Mayer. Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number one, what is the name of the Dalai Lama's palace? Potala. Potala. What is the name of the city that Potala is in, number two? Lhasa. Lhasa. Number three, what are the Lhasa abominable... I can't resist that. <laughs> Lhasa come home. Lhasa come home, really. <laughs> well, I know I'm not going to be asked back. I might as well throw the book. <laughs> What are the abominable snowmen, number three? Uh, it's commonly referred to as the Yeti here, but in uh, Tibet, it is a, well, they don't know for sure. Uh, the Russians have claimed to have seen one. Uh, we think it's perhaps a bear that walks on two legs. Number one, what is the second highest peak of the Himalayas? The second highest? I don't know. Number two. We may never find out, at least tonight, because our time is gone, and it's time once again for you to mark your ballots, if you will, please, panel, without consultation. And uh, as you do so, of course, you will select number one, number two, or number three. All set, Polly? Yes. Yeah. Well, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number three. I voted for number three because uh, he looks, I think, like Lowell Thomas, but that may just be because you wanted somebody who looked like him because the real one doesn't. <laughs> but he does, anyway. <laughs> All right, Phil. Well, let me preface this. I'll be very brief. I know exactly who it is, I'm sure. I would bet it's number two. But I've been so sneaky all night, and none of the contestants have won any money, so just a token vote for number one. But it's number two. <laughs> <laughs> now, Polly, you see, he taught you a new way to do what you've been trying to do for the last six months. I'd like to switch my vote. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, how about you? I voted for number three on the basis of the fact that I thought the other two hadn't given proper information on a couple of questions. And hi. Well, right, again, I vote. Take it, take it, number one, please. No, Let again, I, I vote against there. the entire panel what for number is? two because uh, uh, I've met his father, I've interviewed his father, and he the looks eyes. like a younger edition of Lowell Thomas A. Dewey. <laughs> Can you change his vote so they can win some real money? Doesn't change it a lot. <laughs> we know what that is. Sounds to me like he just did. Oh. He talks to me. With a, I thought he had a bushy black eyebrow. Now you're thinking of Groucho Marx. No! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> While the panel is caucusing, may I just say that uh, you've at least heard some expression of whether or not our minds are made up. I don't know. But in any event, let's find out. I'm not voting. <laughs> let's see which one of these young gentlemen really is Lowell Thomas Jr. So, well, the real Mr. Thomas... Please, stand up. <laughs> hey, we're good, though, you must admit. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is Clay Falker, and I'm an editor of Esquire magazine. <laughs> and number three, what about you, sir? My name is Kenneth Shoemaker. I'm with Public Relations, United States Steel. A very time, fine time jockey. Time is running along here. Yes. But one quick question. Lowell, yes. what is the name of your TV series? High Adventure with Lowell Thomas <laughs> on the CBS Senior or, or Junior? <laughs> Senior. Senior. We're both involved. Okay, we got the credits there. We find out now that there were exactly one, two, three incorrect votes for $250 each for a total of $750. High for the night. Divided, gentlemen. Good night and good luck. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight, panel, except to remind you that if, when you help your heart fund, you help your heart. Don't forget that. And, Phil, we'll be looking forward to seeing you Friday night. Nice to have had you here tonight. Thank you, bud. It's good a night, panel. Good night. Good night, night bud. This is Bud Collier saying good night for Jarrett Hall and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is Mark Goodson, Bill Cogman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergens and Miss Carlisle Downs by Florence Lustig. Life jacket supplied by Sid Craft Boats.